Why are some people on earth born into misfortune and end up very quickly in misfortunate circumstances, while others are born into happiness and have only happiness until they die suddenly without even realizing such fortunate circumstances that they enjoy? We can ask ourselves, is this not flagrant injustice? This is an experimental finding. It must be recognized that the Jewish people, when they were still very old, not yet trimmed, believed that, that the one who behaved well had only happiness and that the one who behaved badly was necessarily punished by misfortune. It is the book of Job that shows how ingrained this belief was despite the experience of the opposite. So how do you answer this question? Seems like everything is absurd in this world. Nothing makes sense. To answer this, it is absolutely necessary to consider that before entering into eternal life, where there are no longer any tears nor sorrow, there are six per galleries, six possible stages. Not everyone goes there. Earthly life is only a rung of the ladder that Jacob's ladder leading to heaven. This is one of the more complex bars in that you don't even know if the rest is true. So much so that by looking only at the earth, it seems that everything is absurd. Nothing makes sense. Misfortune strikes a random a bit like the shells during the 1914-1918 war, but in reality with the revelation of Christ we understand that God is purifying our souls. This is the first step in purgatory and some learn humility in this land, while others who could not learn it on this earth will learn it during the passage of death where sometimes they will stay as in a living room. It is the Sheol of which the Old Testament spoke. Others will learn it in front of Christ and others finally after the individual judgment in the classic purgatories that we know. So that in the end no one enters the beatific vision without having died to himself and therefore without having experienced it his own misery, even Christ in his humanity experienced it upon the cross. He who says the epistle to the Hebrews learned obedience from what he suffered. Consequently, to fully understand how this beatitude is realized, which Matthew tells in chapter 5 verse 6, blessed are the hungry and thirsty for righteousness, they will be satisfied. From this land founded on faith, it is necessary to have this total gaze on the stages of purification as for those who will refuse any purification because it is possible. God will never impose his love in the solitary freedom of hell. They too, seeing them, we will be satisfied with justice because we will see that this is their choice. It is their freedom. No one condemned them to hell except themselves. And we even have in the scripture this which is told explicitly in Luke chapter 16 verse 19. This is a story of a poor man who is in misery and there is in a great house from whom he begs a rich man. This poor man named Lazarus will have liked to eat eat the leftovers that the dogs did not want. This poor man was showered with miseries. We do not know his story, but we can guess. And one day he eventually dies and he is taken into Abraham's bosom. That means in the provisional paradise before the coming of Christ. He is with Abraham while the rich is in Hades, not in eternal hell as we think. We can see that his heart has changed. He realized he did, but he begs Abraham to send Lazarus to him to soak his finger a little and to give him a little water which they drink in paradise. Abraham answered him, That's impossible as there is a separation wall between you and us here. You had been privileged. 
during your life on earth now it's your turn to be tormented this is found in St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 25. One may well say to himself upon reading superficially this text that everyone must suffer and therefore everyone remains equal. That is not to say, however, that everyone shall have the possibility to purify their soul and carry their cross that Jesus has revealed it to be the cross of redemption either in this world or in the next purgatory. Consequently, in heaven we will all be beings with equal love and gratitude for each other because no one will be able to show off because everyone will have known this profound experience of pain we will all remain humble one in front of the other